another beautiful Monday night Bible study here on the west side in St. Giragos. We are gathered together every Monday uh, and we are here tonight and we are also uh, grateful and thankful. Brother Mike is back uh, visiting and we are so excited. He's here with us and he's um, so I'm sure the family is more excited but we are very excited because we haven't seen him in a while. We missed him. We are grateful and thankful for uh, peace and harmony. We are grateful and thankful for uh, our country, United States of America, didn't go to disaster. So we are grateful and thankful for a lot of things. We might not be exactly what everybody wanted, but guess what? At least we're grateful and thankful things are in peace everywhere around the world and here in the United States of America. And, and supposedly now they... Pfizer just came up with uh, this, you know, uh, uh, the vaccine. Uh, so they, well, yeah, well, they they're, they're just now bringing it out. So, so anyway. I knew about it six months ago. Yeah, it, well, yeah, I knew about it from before they came out. They had it, so now they're releasing it. That's all it was. Yeah, we get so, it. Yeah, everybody's gonna get it now. Whatever, whatever. So, that being said, we are very happy that everyone's here. Tonight we are going to continue our study in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 4. So open up your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 4 and let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you for this day, O oh Lord. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather together as body of Christ and study your word. Father, thank you for everything you've done in our lives. Thank you for blessing us, O oh Lord. Thank you for all the protection. Thank you for all the hedge of protection. Thank you for all the healings and thank you for all the peace. Um, however it is in the world, O oh Lord. Father, we're just grateful to you and we are thankful. May you decrease me and increase you. Let the Holy Spirit take over this message and teach us tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say, Amen. Last time we learned in chapter 3 how General Abner became a peacemaker amongst all the tribes and brought them together, peacekeeping and uniting all of them together. Unfortunately, he was not taken or understood what he was doing as honorable. So the other general of David, David's side, the King David's side, Joab, tricked Abner and cornered him, ambushed him, uh, per se, and killed him, revenging his own brother's death. So it was a sad day for the nation. Losing somebody who was trying to do good for all sides. Very important, when someone is trying to do good for all sides. Remember, when someone does good for all sides, that person necessarily is not ever loved or liked. There you go. So that's the problem we all face. Because some people on this side <laughs> do all like that. And some people on this side might like it. The other side, so on and so forth. So whoever is making all sides happy, that person not necessarily liked by everybody, unfortunately. So... We saw it in history here, three, over 3,000 years ago, and it's still happening now today, and even happening in our own nation today in Armenia. So, then King David fasted and declared that he was not part of this ambush or treachery or killing. Then he turned into the Lord and said, May the Lord repay the evildoers according to their wicked ways. So very important we understand that ultimately it's not you and I deciding how we are going to revenge or get back. Listen, we had an election last week, right? We all voted. Some people voted one way, some people voted another. We still don't know the outcome, but whatever it is, it's not in our hands anymore. We did what our duty was. We did what our conscience told us to do. We did, we voted our conscience, we did what we had to do. The rest of it is on the Lord. So we cannot be mad at, at this group or that group or this person or that person or this or that, the other. The, regardless of what happens, everyone's a winner and everyone's a loser. Same thing. It doesn't change. So it's happening everywhere around the world. Apparently we are a perfect subject studying about what's going on here 3,000 years ago and what's going on in the United States and in Armenia and everywhere else. So it's very interesting that all this is fitting in for us to understand that it's not what we think, it's what God wants. Remember, I'm going to go off the subject for a minute. Preservation 
it's victory. Preservation is victory. When you preserve yourself, when you exist, you continue existing, you win. The key is, learn it from the Bible. The song last, last week we had, the song that David sang, it's all about preservation. Reserve, preservation. We've been around for over 3,000 years as Armenians, if you want to say that, right? And it's all about us preserve, preservation, perseverance, surviving in midst of chaos, in midst of problems, in midst of things coming at us, in midst of disasters and things we might see otherwise. You know, we want to take over the world, but you know what? Slow down. It sounds great, of course, why not? We had the determination to do so, but ultimately the most important determination is survival. To be still existing. The enemy wants us annihilated. The enemy wanted us annihilated all the way back when there were Persians ruling the area. Then the Ottomans, then the rest, then the Romans, then the... I can go on in history, but I don't want to right now. We'll be here all night. So all those different... Uh, the Mongolians, the Genghis Khan, all of them, everybody wanted to annihilate the Armenians, if you want to look at it that way. Okay? And guess what? We're still here. We still exist. We still speak the language. We still pray. We still do what we need to do. We still have a country that we can call Armenia and home. So we are victorious, however you're cutting it. Ultimately, however we look at it, we are victorious because of perseverance. The same thing is happening here. The nation is coming together. David is not trying to pick sides. No, you cannot do that because this, this Abner, this, this general, he was trying to bring everybody together. Even though he was from the one side. But they killed him anyway, right? You see, the thing is, not everybody is going to be happy with your decisions. So it was sad to see that we were in San Francisco over the weekend. The whole city was boarded up and it was vacant. It was empty. It was boarded up. These people were expecting riots. Why are you going to riot in your own country just because you don't like the president? Who cares who is the president? It's this one or that one. They're all the same thing in the end. Doesn't make a difference. It's politics. Just, you know, but why do you have to destroy your own neighborhoods, your own nation, your own land, your own properties, your own businesses, if, if the outcome is not what you want? This is the sadness is what we are dealing with. That's what I'm talking about. So very important, we all have to keep on loving and forgiving. Loving and forgiving and remembering that ultimately it's what it matters is you still exist. You still exist. We are still here. Look, every single one of us, we still have a roof over our heads. Most of us have still jobs. We have hot coffee. We have electricity. We're warm inside. And here we are studying the Word of God. What else do we want? By the way, if you are watching us, please like and share, like and share, so others in your network and friends can be blessed by the teaching tonight. With that being said, so let us move forward in our reading of verses 1 to 3, unless you guys want me to read it. Because oh, there's, yeah, names. there's a lot of names. Okay. Chapter 4, 2 Samuel. Uh, hi. Hi, Sherry. So I'm going to read. When Saul's sons heard that Abner had died in Hebron, he lost heart, and all Israel was troubled. Now Saul's son had two men who were captains of the troops. The name of one was Banan, Bana, actually, and the name of the other is Rechab, the sons of Rimon, the... Rimun, Rimun, uh, the Berotite, of the children of Benjamin, for Berot also was part of Benjamin, because the Berotites fled to Gitaim and have been sojourners there until this day. Interesting things. So these two brothers were captains. Oh, God, no. <laughs> the, the, ba, Bana means in affliction. If you're writing notes, Bana is actually spelled not the way it's spelled here. It's actually B A H N A H. Bahana. Bahana. It's uh, in affliction. That means it's going through pain. That means his mom was having a lot of screaming to do when he was born. That's what they, they called him Bana. She says, Abao! Or they could have called him Aman Allah. That would be the same thing. 
So the second brother, his name is Rechab. Rechab means writer. So that was uh, there, and there were sons of, yeah, and their sons were Ramon, Sister Catherine. What's Ramon? Ramon. 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 What is it? Bravo, pomegranate. Good job, Nur, pomegranate. Yes, Ramon. Yes, that's what his name is. That's it. Yes. Well, the use in Arabic is Ramon, in Hebrew is Ramon. So similar. In high in higher end is Nur. Okay. In English is pomegranate. Oh my God, I forgot. What country is uh, symbol of fruit is Armenia. it? Armenia. There you go. <laughs> CC badge for that. And uh, apricot. Yes. <laughs> CC badge. Pomegranate and apricot. And apricot. Mm-hmm. Colors of the flag. Colors of the flag. You're not listening. Must I talk, please? And blue is free sky. Yes. Blue is the free sky. The red is the pomegranate. And the uh, orange is the... Apricot. Zirana Queen. Yes. Zirana Queen, I mean. I got education. Yeah. All right. Their father's name was Pomegranate and Saul's. And here we have Saul's Ishboshet. Ishboshet, his son. Remember Ishboshet? You guys remember from last night? The one who was. Uh, who remembers what Ishboshet meant? Son of shame. Yes. Son of shame. Man of shame. And then uh, he lost heart. Remember, he's the one who was put as a general. Uh, was taking care of him, protecting him, and made him a king, is dead. So he was very heartbroken and afraid because his general, the guy who actually made him king, is dead. So this is what it is from verse 1, 2, and 3. Verse 4, please. Verse 4. <clears throat> Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel? Jezreel. Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it, ha- and it happened as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. His name was... Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. By the way, Git- Gitaim. Who knows what Gitaim? It comes from Gat. Giat. The, the root word is Get. Gitaim means two wine presses. Gitaim. Remember Gethsemane? See the root word is press. Olive press, Gethsemane, and this one is Gitaim is two wine presses. So what happened is, so we all know Jonathan. Who remembers who Jonathan is? Who remembers who Jonathan is? Yeah, but who, yes, but besides Saul's son, David's best friend. Bravo, Silva C.C. Bash for that. David's best friend, Jonathan. And um, Saul's oldest son. He also had a little boy, five years old, named Be- Mephibosheth. 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 Do you know what it means, by the way? Mephibosheth. Yeah, but well, there's more than... There's three, three words. Mephibosheth. So think about it. The S H E P H means son. So Ishboshet has the same acronym. Ishboshet, yes. Well, it actually means exterminating or emptying or wiping out the idols. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That so. What does Sheth mean? S H E P H means son. Sheth. S H E P H that ending. Right. Well, we, yeah, S-H-E-T-H, correct, you know, both, but uh, that's man of shame and uh, exterminating the, well, the idols are also fit, the sh- chef is the idols. <laughs> oh. So, his name is extermi- exterminating the idols, which means, and when he, the news arrived of his father and his grandfather's death, his nurse took him and, and ran, but she dropped the kid, and he became paralyzed. 
So this is the story. You got to pay attention to this because in the next couple chapters, this is very important. He is going to be a very important figure. This paralyzed little kid is an important figure, what's coming up. So next time I ask this Mephi Bushet, you know, just remember who he is in his story and what happened, whose son he is, very important. His son of who? Jonathan, Jonathan. bravo, good. And his so, dad died. And his dad died, and his grandpa died, and all of them died. So. And he's paralyzed? And he's paralyzed. Wow. Yeah, while his nurse was running away because for safety, thinking they were going to come and kill him. So she dropped him. I don't know, maybe from, I don't know from where. So the kid's paralyzed. Five and six, Marty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why, is it hard? Okay. <laughs> and the son of Rimon, the Beratite, uh-huh. Ishtab, and Baana, uh-huh. went and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishposhet, mm-hmm. who lay on a bed. And they came either into the midst of the house, as though they would have fetched weight, and they Wait. smote him under the fifth rib, and Rechab and Bana. Rechab and Bana. His brother escaped. So this your version, which is old English, uh, is telling us in details exactly where they stabbed him yes. under the fifth rib. So you get detailed. So. These two captains came to Ishbosheth's house because remember they are from the same army, the same people, and they assassinated him. But in your version, we get the details of where they stabbed him. Why are they stabbing him? Because they're trying to impress David. Remember, so but foolish people, foolish, seven. Marky? Oh, Marky, seven. Seven? For when they came into the house, he was lying on his bed in his bedroom. Then they struck him and killed, killed him, beheaded him, and took his head, and were all the night escaping through the plain. After the assassination, assassinated him, they cut his head off, and they escaped, most likely heading to David to show off like they did something good. Eight, please. Silva. And they bought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron, and said to the king, Here's the head of Ishbosheth, Ishbosheth mm-hmm. the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life, and the Lord has avenged my lord the king this day of Saul and his descendants. So they come in and they're so proud of what they've done. But you have to remember David. See, this is where David is different than anybody else. They come in and they're like, King, look, look, ah, ah, we got his head, we cut it for you, and everything. Ah, oh, it is in the verse. But they're bringing it to David. David has no animosity against anyone. David never had animosity against anybody. He had nothing, you know, he was nothing for him, especially this Ishbosheth. He was nobody, you know. His general Abner had meant more, right? So to worry about, even his own father was not David's enemy. Saul was not David's enemy. David was Saul's enemy. Saul hated David, but David didn't. That was his father-in-law. That's it. It was his father-in-law. You know, he was like, okay, you know, he was dealing with him. But the other guy wanted to kill him. So the big difference here, David was Saul's enemy, but Saul was not. Remember, he had many chances to kill Saul, but he didn't kill him. So now, remember, so let's find out what happened. Verse 9, Bigfoot, read 9. And David answered Joshua and Bana, his brother, the son of Ramon, and their wife. And he said unto them, As the Lord liveth, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity. David answers, he says, God had delivered me from my other adversaries all the time. I don't need your help. Why would you think this would impress me? He's like, why did you do this? And why did you think that I was going to be impressed by you killing him and cutting his head off and bringing it to me? What was that all about? Did I ask for it? Was I ever saying that there was a bounty or something that if anybody brings the so-and-so's head that I was going to give something? I never said that. He says, why are you doing this? What was this all about? Why are you trying to, who are you trying to impress? 
Uh, Bill, let's see what you got. 10 and 11, please. When someone told me, saying, Look, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good news, I arrested him and had him executed in Ziklag, the one who thought I would give him a reward for his news. 11. Oh, 11? Yes, please. How much more when wicked men have killed a righteous person in his own house on his bed? Therefore shall I not now require his blood at your hand and remove thee from the earth? Thank you. He says, what made you think that this is going to impress me when that Malachite guy who came and gave me the news that the king Saul was dead and, that, and thinking that he, has, he was going to get rewarded, and he said that he had a hand into killing him. He goes, I made sure he had him, I had him executed immediately. So he says, why do you think that I'm going to be impressed by, and that was Saul. And this is his son that is nobody. And you come in here with the guy's head and you killed him when he was sleeping, like you did something honorable. And that was your king. You were his captains. See, They were traitors. See, for David, he's looking at it going, you were a traitor to your own king. So why would I be impressed by that? So this is the key. Very important that you cannot impress someone, even your own enemy, if you betray your own people. That's the, that's the thing here. So what do you think I would be or wanted to do to you too, he says, for killing an innocent man in his bed for no reason? <laughs> These guys were thinking. Oh. They were thinking. <laughs> I, could you imagine? They were like, This isn't going well. Oops. <laughs> and one brother's telling me, you know, it's funny. Aper, go to get him. We were supposed to get cash or something, some kind of gold. I think uh, we're losing our head in a minute. This is not good. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> All right, 12. So David commanded his young men, and they executed them, cut off their hands and feet, and hanged them by the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the tomb of Abner in Hebron. So David orders those two to be executed, cut off their hands and their feet, and hung by the pool in Hebron so everybody can see. Oh that my was... gosh. That's a little much. <laughs> this is yeah. <laughs> Wasn't the first part of that. Mm, I know. <laughs> Why are we surprised he took to it to a million people? They are doing that here. That's been done all the time, but he has to make a point of Traitors. When someone is a traitor, I think in I don't know which traitor. Tavajan. Thank you. So Tavajan nerun asseborbeke. This ha you have to show the people anywhere in the world, even in the Bible, that you cannot betray your own. This is the outcome, the penalty of betrayal. It's worse than anything else. He says it's bad enough. You show up here, you killed your own king, and you show enough, you cut his head off. The guy had nothing, he was sleeping, he was trusting you. See, that's the sad part. He was trusting you, he let you in because it's your, you're his captains. And you stabbed him, exactly where, fifth rib on the bottom, whatever. And then you cut off his head and you bring it to me like it's a... Uh, so Trusty. that's why David had to cut off their heads and their hands and their feet and hang them. Wow. So... They learn a lesson for others not to be betrayers of their own people. Because betrayals is the worst thing you can do for in, in, in a kingdom. That's how all kingdoms got lost, we know in our history. It's all because of Tava Janir, because of those people that work from inside, they will do the same thing. The nation of Israel, always they lost in the end. They were winning against Rome if the people from inside did not betray them. This, they never learned the lesson, apparently. So he was making a, 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 an example of them. Plus, he was saying that, why do you think I should be impressed? That's what makes King David is very different. King David says, I'm not impressed. That doesn't impress me. What did he do? 
You killed your own king. You bring it to me. He's also a Jew like me. He's a Hebrew like me. Your king, he was my, my best friend's brother. He's Jonathan's brother, right? Ishbosheth is Jonathan's brother. He's also the king's son. He goes, what did you think you did? Something noble? You killed your own king, basically, your own prince, and you're bringing here, you're impressing me. There's, no, there's nothing to be impressing about. It's very important we learn why these things matter in life. The lesson here is not about history, of, but history in the Bible is for us to learn from it. So when we are understanding life, how we can deal with that. You know, he also gave a proper burial you know, uh, to Ishbosheth's head. Remember, they, they were, so they, he buried him. In conclusion, in our life, we have to, what do we understand from this chapter? What did we understand from this chapter? Any hands? Betrayal. And what's betrayal? Going against your time. Yeah, I mean, so what, what, what did you learn from the chapter? Be, I mean, There's consequences that will be paid eventually if you go against your own people. Yeah, it's not just, in, it's, it's, it's a spiritual opposition. It's, yes. You fought what you could gain instead of putting someone else first. Or yeah, because see, these people, the same as the other guy, all of them with what they wanted to gain from it. It was what they were going to get benefit from them. It's about how much I can get from this. I'm going to kill you, but what is that going to benefit me if I do that? So this is what we are saying. But that, what does that mean? How is David fighting it? See, let's focus for a second. Because see, this is a short chapter. It's all it's finished. But let's understand. How is David fighting this? Yeah, but how? Fairly, yes, correct. But how? Are you, are What's you, right? Are you thinking along the lines of David? David is not hating anybody here. He's, He's trying not. to unite. Yeah, Abner was trying to unite. They killed Abner. Yeah, but true. Go on. He's setting a good example. He's becoming a leader for his country. He's becoming a, he's yeah. becoming a true king. That's what I was saying. A true king. Yeah. <laughs> All right, both of you get a CC badge for that. You guys can share it. One week your house, one give, week his house. So. It's pretty good. That's what I was thinking, too. You have to sit straight. Yeah, big one, too. Yeah, yeah. You see, there's always going to be spiritual opposition in our life. Spiritual opposition. See, David's looking at this as a spiritual battle. He's not even looking at the physical battle. You see, every time he flips it and he goes, let God deal with it. God saved me. God's the issue. It's God's hands. It's his thing. So he always flips it into the spiritual side. He looks at it. This is not a physical war. This is a spiritual war. He doesn't act by flesh. That's a good one. Because you see, most of us, we what? We all act on flesh. So, you see, he must battle for words at all times. Never recede. Never fall back. Continuously, we must go forward in all things. You see, David, he's going forward. He put his mission statement. He's putting his vision board. He's looking at where he's going. And he's constantly going that direction. He's not letting things stopping him. Was things easy for David? No. It's been over 20 years, we realize nothing is easy. So far, he's but nothing but trouble. But is he still being a fair and good king? Yes, he is. He's being a fair and a good king, even though all things are happening bad in his life. So many things, but he's focused on the big picture. When the big picture, it's like, okay, in a relationship, there's ups and downs, but you got to look at the big picture. The big picture is, okay, I love my spouse, I love uh, him or her, and that's all there is to it. And the focal point is that we are going to get all together. Okay, so you just put that. That's your focal point, that's your vision board, that's your direction, and you're heading it. Now, things are going to happen, yes. Arguments, fights, people, nagging, coming, you know, doing all kinds of things going to happen in, in midst of this transition life. And so how do you 
So the focus, if you pay attention to every one of these issues, you are going to fall apart right in the get go, right in the gate, right off the gate, or right halfway. Or you are going to stay right in the middle and you're going to say, okay, this is a spiritual attack. I'm not going to let it get to me. I'm going to fight it through because on the big picture, I want to get old with her. I want to get old with him. I want us to be old together. I want us to be together in the long version. I want us to hold each other's hand. I want him or her to be in my funeral. You know, so that's very important stuff. No, really, because you know, I do a lot of funerals. So those are the things I have to, that's what I focus on because I do a lot of funerals. And ultimately it's that is who is there? Who is there in your end when you're gone? Who's loving you? Who's there talking about you? Who's there saying stuff? Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, but it does, it does, it does. So, you see, <laughs> the, all the time, never recede, never fall back. Continuously, we must go forward in all things. Relationships, marriages, life. By the way, business, health, all of it with the same category. No side talk, please. All these things fall under the same category, whether it's health, whether it's business, whether it's relationships, whether it's marriages, whether it's friendships. You see, you guys always forget that part. All of you take that, you don't even think about it. Friendships is most of your life. Friendships are very important because friendships is where you get hurt more than anything else. You get more hurt in friendships than you get hurt in, your, in relationships. Am I right? So, so we should never give up, always go forward. We see David never gave up. He kept on going forward, trusting in the Lord, even though many times everything looked very bad, but the results were God is in control. See, when you say God is in control, regardless of what's going on in your work, your work is everything is like upside down, chaos. You don't even, you cannot see a, a bright light in the end of it. Yes, it's an example for you. So, but you have to say, you know, God is in control and I'm just going to do what I need to do and God has to do. Just like elections, I said it, and everything else in life, we can only do what we can do. We cannot fix everything. We cannot save everybody. We cannot save everyone. We cannot save every relationship. We cannot save the world. We cannot save the country. We can only do so much each. But we have to understand that a spiritual battle we're all fighting. If we put our trust in the Lord, whatever battle we are going through, it will come through and we are going to be more. The outcome will be better when, even though it will be trouble in between. You know, you could be taking care of an elderly parent and they're not always so pleasant. Sometimes they are chaotic. Sometimes they are a nightmare. Sometimes they're just, you just want to, I don't know, throw them in the trash can outside. But you stay true to yourself. You stay true to God. And you just do what you can, not expecting. See, this is where expectations is very big. You see, everybody always expects expectations. Oh, well, if I do all these things... And the result is going to be this, the expectations. We need to give up the expectations or bring them down. Don't expect too much. Do what you need to do and let God overwhelm you. Yes. I was saying you should expect, but you, you should expect it from God. Yes, that's what I said. Let, let God overwhelm you. Your expectations should not be, oh, well, if because, 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 that da 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 uh -uh. Just like I say all the time, in even relationships and marriages, it's 100%. You don't, it's like, if I do this, you do that. No, you just do what you need to do. If you get it back, it's a bonus feature. You get it back, it's great. You don't get it back, you keep on doing it. This is what David has been doing. This is what we have to learn from David. David keeps on going, 
regardless. He's not discriminating. He's not pinning sides. He's not saying, I'm from here and you're from there. You guys this and I'm this and all. He's not saying any of that. He's loving everybody and controlling everything in the same way. He's respecting the, he is going, that's why he's known as the great king because ultimately he's going to rule everybody in the same manner without discrimination. His only downfall was women. Apparently it was pretty much all the kings. His only downfall. Too many wives, which means too many kids, which means too many problems. That's the only downfall. All great men have that downfall. Too many women in their life. <laughs> I think there's a principle here that the central figure is Saul. And all these people this? know that Saul misbehaved or was a, was a bad king or whatever they're thinking. At least they think in David's eyes. So our principle as Christians is we're the only people who love the unlovable. And we kind of lose that. And we get like involved. Kind of yes. Right. Wander, we hope they go to hell. Right. Yes. Every time I say those things, somebody reminds me that I shouldn't say that. The whole thing of life is to have a relationship with God and bring Him glory. Yes. And uh, everybody who's not connected, we have to love. We have. God says we must love everybody, even the Democrats. Just kidding. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you couldn't hold back. Could I had. Or Republicans. <laughs> or Republicans. But they don't think it's worth. I mean, that's right. Hard. So we must love them all. The key is. What's the difference, really? Because ultimately, in all sides, they all have their own values. In all sides, they think their passion is the greatest. They're not saying, oh, we're going to do this so they can go all, you know, and burn. No, they're saying this is going to be the greatest if we do it this way. So the other one says this, the other one says that. In the end, you know, it's just, well, even to me, it's a revelation sometimes. You know, even I have to come to that conclusion. Luckily, I have a very close person that gives me that insight that you have to keep on, you know, loving them all regardless and not to, you know, uh, get mad at them, which is good. Uh, so, so we all have to do that. We all have to be like King David. Just because, you know, uh, Saul's family were his supposedly enemy, he didn't look at them as enemy. He didn't look at them as enemy. He goes, they're all my people. They're not my enemy. We do it. They had a different political views. Exactly what they were. They had a different political views. They were not enemies. They were the same people with different political views. And David did not. Judge. He decided. He didn't. Yeah. He did. He decided not to see the difference. He just said, you know, respect them, honor them, and whatever. Even though his side won, whatever. But he didn't want to put the other ones down. Amen. Like Very good. a good leader. Like a good leader. Today I, to, I already gave you enough credit. I talked to a maintenance guy who was sure. standing by his truck. And he was a black guy. And he asked me what I thought about the election. And I said, I thought there was a lot of fraud. And he says, oh, we don't know that. I mean, we can't tell that. He's always a kid. You know, so. And then he said that he was against Trump because he once called him name. Because he was kind of ranting in the background about uh, Trump. And then I later thought, you know, because I tried to make some responses. But I didn't know what to say. And, you know, whenever you get in a situation like that, you can share the gospel with somebody. You can say, you know, it's in God's hands. And yeah. so I'm waiting to see what happens. I won't be disappointed. It's, because God is trying to do something. And it's all in God's hands. So we, we don't, we, listen, again, this is what I said a while ago when we started. We all voted our conscience. Whatever it was good for your heart, you did that, you know, in God's eyes. And whatever the outcome is, it's in God's hands. So it's not in our hands. And God knows what's right and what's wrong and what's good for us and what's bad for us. If we weren't going to be punished or not or whatever, we don't know. Amen? Let's close up. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for this opportunity for giving us the chance to come to you, O Lord, and study. Father, thank you for blessing us with this wisdom that we must love all regardless of our political views. Father, thank you for blessing the United States of America still having the chance to people with their all. They had the most in 125 years of voting, so we are grateful for that. The, the hard work on all sides worked, so uh, let's uh, continue um, bringing people together and loving one another instead of hating each other. Father, may you just put a peace and harmony in midst of all our hearts. May you bring a peace 
and let the peace be lasting in Armenia and in nagorno karabakh May you just bring a peace in everyone's homes, in our relationships, in all relationships, and, and may you bring peace and help in all the homes that we are praying for, O oh Lord. May you just bring peace in everyone's hearts. May you just bring a hedge of protection on everybody tonight, O oh Lord. May you continue on showing us. May you continue on showing your love to the young ones, especially the new generation to come. Open up their hearts, their minds, their souls. Show them, penetrate into them. Show them how real you are, that you are a living God. Just like King David said in 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 9, Lord lives. Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from all adversary. Lord lives. That's what he's talking about. A real, alive, true God who has redeemed you and I, our life from all adversary. Adversity. So again, an adversary also, the enemy, the devil. Because of his death and resurrection on the cross, we have a chance to have a true and living God living in our hearts. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and keep you in His peace. God bless you all. Thank you. Before we stop, can I just read a, a, te a brief text that my wife sent me last week? She says, no matter who is president, Jesus is king. Amen to that. Yes. Good job, Good job Mom. Good job, Mom. Yes. No matter who's president, Jesus is king. God bless you all. Thank you so much.